Well, hello everyone. Thanks for tuning in for episode two. Uh, my name's Adam. If you've not seen it before, nice to meet you. This is Michael. Hey guys, you're right. How we doing? <laughs> well, today we have got quite an interesting episode for you guys. We've got some of Britball's finest coming on the show to join us. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we're excited, aren't we? As well, to be fair. Um, yeah, I'm hoping to get on decent guests every week. I mean, a couple of these today, decent guests. One, well, maybe not so much, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. They're all really, really good players, um, and we just thought it'd be a good idea to. Um, sometimes you don't always have the privilege of being able to play with a good player or speak to a good player. Sometimes we hold them up in quite a pedestal, but um, you know, all these guys, we asked straight away, and you know, they all gladly accepted straight away, and um, are more than happy to share their knowledge or. They'll all be very humble and not say they're very good players, but <clears throat> having played with or against all of these guys, I can assure you all, these are all very excellent players in their own individual positions. So excited for it. Yeah, now before we start introducing guests, all I need you guys to do is please uh, go and check out our intro music. The band's called Bare Roots. Um, the song that you just heard there was Ride the Wave. So if you've not heard that before, go give them a check, give them a little follow. Um, I've posted a link to their YouTube channel in the comments, so if you can go check that out, that'd be grand. Don't do it until after this podcast finished, though. Yeah, don't, don't avert your eyes. Yeah, I shouldn't I shouldn't say podcast anymore. As you might be able to see now, we've changed our name. We've changed Yeah, we have. We've changed it to a vodcast. Yeah. <laughs> I think, to be fair, vodcast is this kind of thing what's trending at the minute. You see it on the telly quite a lot now with people like talking alongside sporting events, so... We do what I get confused with. There's some really good other podcasts out there, and um, some other really good live streams out there. And we just kind of want to separate ourselves and just say it's not we're not competing against other ones. We're just hoping to bring good quality content week in week out via this method. And um, we'll let the experts do what they do, and we'll not experts, but we'll we'll stumble them out doing this. We're, <laughs> we'll we'll have have a, get people on who are experts who can help us. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a crack on and just hope for the best sort of situation. Yeah, going exactly. On. Yeah. Yeah. So, will um, who should we invite on first, Michael? Who should we, who should we get on? You'd reckon? Should I do it best player first? Oh, you can't do that. No, you can't. I can't no, you just call <laughs> them out. <laughs> no, I, I, you know what? We'll go with we'll go with Will first. Will was the first one to a message straight away. A um, lot of respect for Will. Um, like watching Will play. Love playing against him. Really good competitor. Um, so yeah, let's get Will on first. That's, that's fair. Well, hello there, Will. Hey guys, How's it going? Good? Yeah, good, thank you. Doing all right. <laughs> now, before we get cracking into this, we need to just put a little disclaimer out there, just so everyone knows if they can't see the GB helmet behind you, <laughs> that you're just proudly <laughs> showing off there that you are a GB player, yeah? Or is that, yeah, did you just, just buy that EB now, Yeah, just borrowed it. Just borrowed it for today, yeah. <laughs> so... Can you give us like a little background of who you play for or who you've played for and or what you're currently doing now sort of situation? Like, uh, Who I've played for, that's going to take most of the podcast. Um, All right, then. Let's, let's just... Half of Britball by now. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, started in Nottingham, then went to university in Hull, then been um, bouncing around the north. So went played at Sheffield Predators, who are now Sheffield Giants. Yeah. Um, then played for Sheffield Hallam Warriors, uh, which was a good season. Um, it was a uh, one of those classic masters before before Bucks took uh, over. Is that, when, is that do, when you guys went like ten and zero? Was it? And you play with, Was it Zach who played safety with you at the time? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Good yeah, team. Had, uh, Very good team. Yeah. Um, even Saul had come back. Dave Saul, yeah, football's yeah. favourite troll, um, <laughs> was OC for us that year. That was that was a good year. Um, I'd love to there, get him on this. Oh yeah, that'd be, <laughs> I mean, he's got some stories. I'm sure he's got some stories <laughs> on the hit list. <laughs> so where where is it you're currently playing now, and what what sort of position do you play? Like, give give us the full lowdown on you. Like, what position wise who you're playing for? Um, right now, uh, I suppose I'd say I'm a free agent, but I'm probably most likely going to be playing at Tamworth again. This year, I've played Tamworth for about four year, four or five years on and off in between kind of seasons abroad. Um, 
but it's kind of local to me. So it, it makes sense to stay there and still be playing at kind of the high end of Britball um, instead of going to the most local teams to me that are Div 1 and Div 2. So yeah. I'd rather be at that top level whilst, that, whilst that... I still can for the next yeah. year or so. So I mean, to go abroad then yeah. this year? Oh, has COVID put kind of scuppered that for you? Well, um, well, I've kind of I've kind of retired from from pro ball now. I guess um, yeah. started doing more adult things. Took on a full time job. Got a got a all wedding right. to plan. Got uh, houses to look at, and all that kind of real yeah. life adult stuff, which unfortunately gets in the way of doing that. Uh, I did have an offer from Carlstad this year. Um, I was, <laughs> I was I was this close to going. I phoned up my work and was like, "Can I just have a month off?" That we had just a month to go off and fanny about in uh, over in, in Denmark, no, Norway, Sweden, Sweden, Sweden. Um, <laughs> one of them, mate. It's one, one of them. One of the, one of the Scandinavian <laughs> ones that played. Yeah, um, yeah. Unfortunately, had to. So I passed that on to to a couple of guys over there, and um, and they seem to be doing all right now. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's the end of Pro Bowl for me. So hopefully, just got kind of GB and uh, Tamworth coming up next year. So. Um, that's the plans. Covid's obviously putting a bit of a damper I mean, on this year. I'd much rather will if you went and played abroad, so we don't have to face <laughs> this year. But you know, feel free. I, I can agent for you to see. I can speak to your missus just to get you not playing for Tamworth. <laughs> I mean, he has just said he's a free agent, so I mean, yeah, this, this is a recruitment <laughs> po- podcast for the Titans. He <laughs> can't be peering buffer as a player, but I mean, <laughs> well, are, you yeah. open, are you open for like photo shoots and things? Because I reckon if you yeah. can, you can be peered for that. Like, <laughs> Yeah. I don't think anyone anyone's paying for those photos. <laughs> no, no, listen, the paying for the photos, you can't pay you for that. You know what I mean? <laughs> You've got to think, mate. You've got to think. Swing it one way. Sorry, I'm I'm not far from Leicester, actually. I'm, I mean, I should say. <laughs> <coughs> not <Shouldn't laughs> any any names of teams. There's a bit of a blip in the bottom. Yeah. Sorry, did that come <laughs> through? Yeah, we're going to edit that out. We'll just uh, edit that. It's not live, is it? Oh, yeah. I think every single person on this podcast, apart from me and you, who are not very good at American football, might have a similar comment, to be fair. <laughs> we probably all had the same offer. <laughs> Should we introduce one of our other guests? Yeah, just quickly, Will, position, what what, what oh, position yeah. do you play? Oh, yeah, uh, safety and then like kick return, punt return, running down, hitting people, all That's that good, good yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah. Cool, That's right. A, decent. Go on, Will, I'm going to let you pick the next one. You pick who else we're going to bring on first. Who we're going to make wait. That's what we want to uh, do. Let's go for Harry. <laughs> Let's bring on Harry. Let's leave Johnny. Thanks to his comment. Let's go. Can I go? <laughs> you all right, Harry? Yes. I'm all good. How's it going? It's very good. I mean, I don't know if you heard, but Will was the guy that's just said to bring you on and leave Jonathan to sit and wait in the wings there. So yeah, that's about right. Yeah. You, can th- you can thank him for bringing you on there. Cheers, Will. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. But- Thanks for coming on, Harry. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Yes, yeah, okay. uh, thanks for asking me on to to come onto your lovely vodcast. Yes. No, yeah, no, it's a pleasure to have you. It's um, it's good to have a, another player from the north representing on on one of these things. I'm not yeah. gonna lie, it wasn't until this week when Michael was like, "We need to change it to vodcast," that I've ever heard that word before. Nah, so I never heard it. I was like, "Okay, yeah, we'll change it. Yeah, we'll do that." <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Make our new thing. <laughs> um. So, Harry, let's have a, a quick background from you. So, where are you currently playing and what sort of standard are you playing at and things like that? Yeah, so currently, obviously, it's kind of um, currently deciding what to do, I guess, is the, the right word. Um, I guess with like kind of all COVID stuff, and I think you see it around the league, really, like people are making some decisions on what to do with their like football lives and things like that. But for me, so... I started up, I started pretty late really. So I started playing uh, at uni in like second year of uni at LJMU where we played. I think I played like two games there before I went to um, play senior football. So I tried to email Manchester Titans actually. I literally sent them an email. I was like, I've never played, I've only played two games. Um, should I just come along? And, and, and then obviously no one replied. Um, biggest mistake of our lives. That is, you know what, Harry? You know what? Awkward, but, you know. The funny thing is, I have got the exact same story of why I didn't join the Titans. For oh, really? Years. Well, yeah, I, I missed out. Social. Missed out. That's it. Like, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I can only blame them. So, 
<laughs> but yeah, so I went, I uh, played at so I played at Merseyside Nighthawks for about three years um, before I decided to kind of have a go at um, playing abroad. I went and played at Karlstad for so in Sweden for two years. So we won like two Swedish national championships and a, and a European Champions League there. Um, so that was like a, it was just a really lucky <clears throat> for me essentially that I got to go play with a bunch of really good guys on a really good team. So a load of um, Swedish national team players um, and they were just just a really dominant team and I just went and kind of tagged on pretty much and so that was nice for me. Um, and then I've, since I've been back, I've been playing at Nighthawks again and obviously playing GB since um, kind of when I got back from Sweden. So like 2016, I guess, was like when I first started and those kind of games in Worcester when they played there. So I played pretty much every GB game since then. I did. I did like. I did say these guys would be humble. Harry's tagging along was what was yeah, it? A thousand yards. Yeah. So I ended up. Yeah. Down. I had like two. <laughs> two. I had a thousand yard season each time I went, but it's like sixteen game seasons. So you know you have quite a long time to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, tag. Yeah. I, I mean, I would. I wish I could tag along to one game. Never mind the full season. Oh, right. Yeah, it was nice. Thousand yards. <laughs> well, it's one of those like we'd score. I think we scored. So it was one game we scored like eighty four points. And I didn't score one touchdown. So I guess it's uh, didn't do <laughs> yeah, a very good job. You still had like 400 yards. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's one of them fantasy players where you're sitting there going, why have they not scored? Yeah. Like, <laughs> what's going on? I was um I remember, yeah, literally like the first kind of few games I played, I had a couple of hundred yard yard games, but never scored a touchdown. And everyone was just like, What's wrong with you? I would have kept getting like tackled at like the two yard line. But I was just I thought I was fast, but then Teammate. you realized you're actually yeah, a little bit slow. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get the running backs getting them titties. That's <laughs> it. We just we had like a QB was like six six or like two sixty or whatever. So he was just actually just like you just jog it in from the one yard line and uh, yeah. yeah, I think he had about fifteen rushing touchdowns just all from like the two. So it's pretty easy then, isn't it? I guess. I'll tell yeah. you what, right? I've got a little claim to fame actually when we're talking about the quarterback there. I am actually the fattest <laughs> quarterback ever in Britball. I don't know, um, like I've seen some I don't know. Yeah, I've played quite Is that like weight wise? No, no, you strictly weight. Count. Uni does not count. I am telling you now, I have played two after games. last after last week's podcast, I don't think Div Two counts. We we pretty much put that to the curb last week. <laughs> and it was division one, we only got relegated afterwards, right? <laughs> because you played quarterback. That's not my fault. No, I think you'll find I threw it the right way. People just didn't catch it. That's what I'm going with. Yeah, and yeah. no one in the comments can say otherwise. So, <laughs> we'll leave it that. Um, should we invite Jonathan on? No. no. Yeah, just, just leave him. Should we just leave him sit there? Should, let's just leave he's him. He's probably just sorting his hair out still, though. So, he'll take yeah. a while. Thing is, I can see him what he's doing when we I mean, say like, <laughs> he'll like, oh, like he'll be like trying it on, like deciding. <laughs> he's sitting shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's bring Jonathan on. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's sick. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Got me. How you doing, guys? We do apologise for leaving you too long there, man. It's okay. No, I was just enjoying actually just watching and listening, to be fair. I, I, I'll i be honest with you. For about two minutes, I actually forgot I was coming on. <laughs> so I, was, you know, I, just found, I just found myself sat here just watching along. Uh, so I was like, oh, actually, this is pretty cool. And I was like, oh, wait, oh. Wait, actually, well, I think I'm coming on in a second. Well, if you're watching along, I hope you've liked, share, shared, and followed. By the way, like that's <laughs> yeah. I have actually, I, I think I've got a few people watching. Like everyone I know, I think. Well, no, Mike's on it, so that's half of the people I know. Um, <laughs> and, then, uh, and then, and my mum's watching. Um, oh, so yeah, that's definitely everyone I know is uh, is watching this at some point. So. <laughs> So, Jonathan, can we get a bit of a uh, an intro for you? So, where are you currently playing, and what what else have you sort of done? Are you played any like where where have you played basically? Uh, right, okay. So, we'll go from back to front, I guess. Um, so, started off at Lancashire Wolverines. Um, played started as a linebacker actually. Um, then when I realised I couldn't tackle, um, I kind of like got moved over to the offensive side of the ball. Um, I probably was, maybe not now, but I probably was the smallest offensive lineman um, in Britball. That's fake Div 2, Div 1 and Prem as well um, at the time. So I basically put on a few uh, few pounds, a few unwanted, a few kind of wanted, um, and then just moved over, over to offensive line. So 
stayed at Wolverines for a, uh, a few years, <laughs> and then um, <laughs> yeah, he's got I, he's I like definitely got some. There. I like that He's comment there from comments, Martin. Can wait, tell you. wait for him. Wait for him to finish it, Martin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, you've not heard what I've got to say. Yeah, um, yeah. So I was at Wolverines for a while. Um, went through some really good teams there, uh, and then turned quote unquote pro. Me and Mike argue about this all the time. Um, Semi pro, pro. I don't know. I'm sure the other two boys would definitely take the pro side of things. Uh, moved over to Finland. Um, so the missus with me, uh, pregnant at the time. We didn't know, but uh, yeah. So we went over to Finland, played for the Senior Crocodiles. Um, had a really, really good season there. Really opened my eyes as to what, you know, European football can be, um, as opposed to what it is, you know, back at home where we are. Um, you know, as you guys will know, especially like with Swedish football as well, it's definitely not too dissimilar. Um, you know, the... what you, the way they look at football over there, you know, it's not a number 38 sport over there. It is in their top five sports. Everyone loves it. So, yeah, I had a really good year um, back then. That was 2018, I think. Came home, retired, um, as everyone does, I think, um, after a while. And I think it was, well, if anything, actually, I can blame Mike um, for my coming out of retirement. Um, so now... Um, controversially or not controversially, I am attached to Manchester Titans. Um, so that's been a, a long time coming. I think everything in its way has tried stopping me from playing for, for Manchester from dislocated shoulders. Jonathan, just two seconds yeah. out. Where did you say you're attached to now? <laughs> what, what <laughs> really clear, really clear for Martin here, mate. Yeah, where, where... to um. It's yeah, it's Premier Division uh, Manchester Titans that I'll right, be um, cool. playing for this season. Should another <laughs> pandemic not hit us or something else, maybe a car, maybe Martin in the car hits us. I don't know. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah. I've, just, I've just got some feedback through, so I didn't quite catch what you said. No, it was the same in my ears too. I, yeah. I, I don't think it's, it came out. Um, so yeah, um, did, oh yeah, did a stint at Yukon Rams as well. Um, apart for this uh, this guy Will to um, ruin. Ruined my year at UCLan. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Uh, I've not forgotten. You might have, but I definitely haven't. Um, so, yeah, he's, he ruined our year. But no, we had a really good season. So, um, uh, yeah, and that's me. So, this year will be for Titans. What are you oh, saying, Harry? Got, oh, see, so, so he's got um, one of three. Lineman, offensive lineman, QB, wide receiver in Harry. And then defensive covered, defense covered by Will, really. So we tried to get a bit of everything on elite in their own different ways, different positions. So, so lads, I have got to tell you. So, obviously, last week was our first show of doing the Brit Ball and podcast. It was a podcast last week, but it's changed this week. <laughs> <laughs> so, last podcast week, with pictures. Yeah. So, we hit a really big milestone last week that we've just done again. So I'd like to share that with you. Yeah. We just had our <laughs> next bit of spam in the chat. Well done, boys. So well done, guys. I'm just I'm, I'm <laughs> big follows. That that spam has come in just for you. So I'd just like to say thank you for that, guys. Um move, moving swiftly on. We've got oh, we're there. We've got Martin's coming back with us. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. I mean, you've got other people in the in the chat here. Like we've got someone from Tamworth as well. He's just you're just arguing with me, guests here. Thanks very much, Martin. Appreciate if you kept it on the down low now. He definitely <laughs> won't. I know Martin too well. He doesn't keep anything on the down low. He's like, I hope I hope you win, but sorry to the other guests. So <laughs> the the next part of the show that we want to get on to is what is uh, your your best Brit Ball memory? So What's your best memory of playing in the UK? So, I mean, we'll fire that over to Will. Will, what what is your best memory of playing over here? If if you've uh, got one, that is. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just throw that out. Everyone's like, "Oh, we played in Europe." So, <laughs> <laughs> um, back home, it's been uh, it's been a lot. I've always had a lot of hits to the head over the years, so those memories are kind of fleeting. Um, but I, I, I don't I suppose the, the the last one I can remember because it's probably the last one um, was being able to play for Great Britain in front of 
like back home because uh, I got picked for GB in 2018 when we had the Euros away. So I only got to play away. Um, so it was actually not really nice playing in the New River Stadium last year in front of a home crowd of all 150, 200 people that were there, but had uh, friends and family who'd come over, come all the way down um, to come watch. So that was, and to get the win against Russia as well. So that was, I, I think that's probably my best moment in Britball. You see, I watched that. I watched that game online, and those Russian boys look big, mind. Like they looked, they looked like some <laughs> units. Like I, I was watching that, and I was like, I do not want to be involved in that game whatsoever. <laughs> like I don't even want to coach on that sideline. <laughs> Like, I know you guys went out and handled yourselves, but I was just like, no, not for me. I'm done. I'll just uh, shut the laptop and not watch anymore. Fortunately, the receivers were were slightly smaller, so it was all right. I could yeah, deal with the receivers. It was the it was the big guys up up front. And saw them I'm like flat. I'm just gonna hang back. Play yeah. Let's play cover three, cover two. I'm just gonna sit deep. Just see a pulling line, and you're like, no, I'm good, mate. I'm good. Yeah. Just crack on, fella. Yeah. I'll take that little slot. That little slot guy, yeah. I'll stick Again, with that he's guy. so humble. He's so humble. I've played against Will and Will, I'm not a small guy in the field and he'll always come and get chippy and try and smack me in the face in a game. Even when he's not meant to. I know I see him on field goal when I'm stood there. He comes flying down just trying to hit people. <laughs> hey, can I can I just can I just tell a quick story about Will? Oh, come on. Story <laughs> this time. Is really a, a massive unprepared story. Do I want to be here for this, Johnny? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, 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 it's okay. Run. It's not. It's, it's kind of not one of those sort of uh, stories. <laughs> <laughs> so, my second season, maybe I think, uh, <laughs> I was playing for Wolverines, um, and we played away at Tamworth. Now, previously to this, so for those that don't know, most do, but I work with Mike, so we kind of like, you know, I think I physically spoke to him. Uh, collaboratively for about eight hours today, including this. So my missus is fuming, by the way. We, but... we, was, we was working as well, if my boss is watching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. okay. yeah, we were working, by the way, in case that you are watching. Um, so Mike basically you know, explained, he was like, uh, we're doing an elite uh, vodcast and uh, we've got Will Hobson, we've got Harry Routledge. I'm thinking, right, yeah, that's two very elite guys. And he's like, oh, do you want to come on? I was like, to do what <laughs> so and, right so that's uh, that was quite a good thing but he showed me a picture of will i was like oh yeah i know will hobbs i know will hobbs he's like yeah he plays for tamworth and he went yeah this is him and he showed me a picture and i thought and i looked at it and I, the only thing that i thought when i saw this i thought oh you little prick <laughs> <laughs> now mike you know what i'm talking about will yeah for now I, I, you might gather why why i'm saying this i don't know if you were injured at the time um, yeah. but it was torrential downpour. This was away at Tamworth, um, and this was before um, you, you wherever you play now. This was back on the was it a cricket ground or behind it or whatever? Yeah, Atherston, Atherston Cricket Club, yeah. yeah, it was torrential downpour, uh, and it was a very close game, by the way. You might add, this was when things were close between us, um, and you were on the sideline in a Rey Mysterio mask with no top on, with banners and flares attached to every arm and everything with this. Do you remember in the World Cup when they brought those, uh, was it a Vu, am I right saying a Vuvuzela? Yeah. I might get destroyed yeah. for that. One of those big horn things. And every single time we had the ball, it was Will just making these stupid, <laughs> stupid noises, dancing on the sideline. And uh, did you, was it like, a, did you guys used to call itself the hype man at the time? Is that what it was? Uh, Summit Juice, Juice Man, Juice? Juice, juice Man. Yeah. So juice. I mean, it anyway. was me essentially just being an idiot, really. <laughs> and I remember um, we'd gone down the field and we got to the three yard line. I think this was to tie the game. Um, we got to fourth down. I think we'd like maybe like rolled out play action picked the ball off, ran down the field, and it was just Will running down the sideline with their DB all the way, blowing this stupid trumpet. And I just thought I would love to just come over and kick the living shit out of you. Um, so that's uh, one of two times you've really upset me, Will. Actually, I still don't even know why we get on now, think about it. Um, so, yeah, that's my story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sam Rimmel. Oh, there he is in the cup. There's that picture. There's 
<laughs> There's yeah, that, there's that picture, yeah. Get that full screen, Adam. <laughs> I'm not full yeah. screen. I the know. last minute trip to Hobbycraft to buy, buy body paint, half orange, half black. And, uh, <laughs> I thought you just had a nice tan. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've broken my foot. Um, so I wasn't so I wasn't playing. So I thought I had to uh, had to impact the game in any way possible. Um, oh yeah, you definitely did. And uh, we've got a similar so situation that the irritated the London Warriors as well um, in about two thousand and two thousand seventeen when uh, when Tamworth won the the Brit Bowl um, in their semis. They were playing against London Warriors at home at same state same place Atherston. Um, and I'd been away in Switzerland that year, so I had nothing to do with Baffa Britball at all that year. I was not registered, nothing. I was just a Swiss player, technically. And I was just come down to watch, and I think there's quite a, f- a few guys from always, from loads of always good when clubs. you have to prefix. Always good when you have to <laughs> prefix it with. I wasn't affiliated with Baffa at that point. <laughs> <laughs> So anything they, you do say right now, they can't hold against you. So. Yeah, yeah. Help. I just, I'm just. Um, well, this is what 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 confused me so much was that um, I was doing similar sit stuff. Had a cowbell, was shouting around, being an idiot. Um, it's about I may have been on the other sideline, you know, the Warriors sideline at the time, just being really loud and quite irritating. Um, to the point where the refs came over, stopped the game, and then said, if you don't stop, we're going to start penalising Tamworth. I was like, what? You, you can't do that. I'm not affiliated with Tamworth. I'm not part of it. They're like, no, we're going to do it. Until I had the whole of my old team turn around to the side and go, Will, just get off the pitch. Just go. Just leave. Just go to our side. You're not um, wanted. Yeah. So essentially, I had to to leave because the Warriors complained about me to the referees despite not being affiliated oh, at all with Baffer or the Tamworth Phoenix at the time um, not like the Warriors that to complain really strange no. that but, uh, usually just yeah. such a <laughs> but, uh, I'm not even going yeah. there don't even go <laughs> there no. 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 That, that is a, that's a trench you're never getting out of mate I'm telling you yeah that, uh, saying the Warriors don't have fun when they're playing as Scottish refs are two things you just don't want to go out in this <laughs> wow. yeah so yeah, I was promptly I just, removed. I came back to the tablet sideline. That wasn't me that said that. Okay, <laughs> you've got to play loads of games in Scotland. <laughs> yes, at, at every level, youth, junior, university, everything, everything I coach. You're like, oh yeah, he doesn't like. You Scottish text refs. you text me the other day saying you can't stand playing in Scotland with Scottish refs. No, 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 no. I think you find, <laughs> I think you find. I said I love playing in Scotland. <laughs> in fact, my. I was going to say my fear. I've got like two refs that are really, really. In fact, there's three that I think are really good refs, and one of them Scottish. So that counts. <laughs> so, like that that counts. Doesn't doesn't referee American football? But he's just a referee. <laughs> no, no, it's the Scottish guy who works in Foot Locker. <laughs> no, he's, he's a darts referee. Like, uh, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I give up. I give up. I'm sorry. I apologize. Scottish referees just like. Great disclaimer, right? In fact, most of them, yeah. Just I'm sorry, (laughs) 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 so oh, peddling I've ever seen. To be fair, I don't care how you elite you are as a player, there is nothing worse than that getting up at four or five o'clock and traveling up to, to Scotland to play. Like, it doesn't really matter how good you know or bad Edinburgh are because they're the team we play in the Prem and you know all you guys will resonate. How hard is it that first couple of snaps? Because they're big boys as well up there and they do hit you hard. It's tough, isn't it? Really tough those first couple of snaps in, in Scotland in particular. I, I always find I'm just stuck in mud the whole game. Mm, especially at Edinburgh. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think... Edinburgh. Nah, they're like the Mackies, like the two Mackies you've had before you get on the pitch is normally the issue for me. I, I feel yeah, like he's got an athlete life. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Uh, what's but... that? Matt Donald? Matt... What? Well, you're I'm a lineman. Not... I don't know anything about that. Well, it's either that or alternatively, you like stay over and then EKP will burn your bus down. I'm pretty sure that's one thing they did to the Blitz, didn't they? Um... <laughs> yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, right, okay, yeah. Why don't you? Why don't you say more about that? Like, yeah, story that's all I know. As long as you don't beat them, you're all right. I think you're okay. Like if you go up and lose, then it's um, 
an easy hey, way down, I think. Ring, ring Shark and ask, and ask him what it's like when you beat him. <laughs> He's, uh, I only beat I mean, it's funny though because when I ever used to play those guys when I first started we would get absolutely smashed by them they would absolutely annihilate us I remember playing like both ways going to EKP yeah. and they had like Jamie Charles and that like, shark and these guys would like I remember being on what was it on like field goal block or something and these guys would just yeah. like run me over constantly and then yeah, that was like Generally, one of my best moments was when we actually came back. Like, me and I came back after I like, came back from Sweden. We started playing the Prem. And we went and actually, like, played EKP and absolutely annihilated them, like, twice in one season. And it was, like, that was the biggest change for us, I think, like, mentality-wise, that we got used to, like, go, you'd drive up there, like, assuming you were going to get your ass kicked. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, once you, like, kind of flick that switch, you understand that, like you can take steps to make sure that you're prepped when you get there. Obviously, not having two mackies before you go is ideal. But yeah, coming down to one is definitely a big better thing. <laughs> you only have like, and then if you have book fast ready for the way home, then that always helps as well. I find. <laughs> so, I think... Yeah, that is my mum, by the way. <laughs> the other person in his life. Is that your mum? <laughs> that is my mum. Yeah. Oh, yeah, mummy! I was absolutely counting on to say something. Oh, really? I am. <laughs> uh, she's one of those shamers she'll definitely shame me and she'll laugh about it I can tell you now I mean are you available next week to come on and tell us some stories about Jonathan wouldn't get oh, that no. <laughs> <Rocking vodka>. <laughs> <laughs> trying to prop me up at half time after I, I can't I can't see anything I've been uh, banging heads with Shark at EKP and I remember my mum used to come and find me at half time I'd be like we sat like this like this with big big towel over my head. Well, she's gonna have to sort his hair out now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> my mum would turn around and go, "Oh, he's probably in a bad way, isn't he?" Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I won't say anything else now. <laughs> I tell you, it's good. I think that uh, that Ryan Ryan Cummins has commented saying I got wrapped up by the three of the linebackers <laughs> when I got to play against them at Edinburgh. Um, I, I think I have to agree with him there. I think there's some very, very good linebackers up in Edinburgh. Yeah, they're pretty um, strong there, I think. Harry, sure. you would have had to scheme against them, wouldn't you, playing quite Yeah, yeah those side. guys. I know they've changed coaches quite a bit, though, haven't you? Like coming up to this mm-hmm. season. But, like, obviously, the last couple of years, they've had like Ross Templeton there, who was yeah. at EKP and Shark Great coach. Them out as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, like, they're, yeah, they were definitely really strong at linebacker, which was something that we always had to kind of take into account. I think, like, when we. We always say, like, coaching-wise, you have to have kind of plays that are good against players that aren't going to read as well. Do you know what I mean? So there's guys that are just going to play downhill, but those guys actually will read pull and stuff like this at linebacker level. Guys. So so you got to have your play action with where your guard's going to pull and, and all these things, and it means you can actually play with, like, you can actually run their more exciting shit when you get there. Um, yeah. when you're playing those guys who like they're playing downhill and I know from practice like GB practice those guys go hard all the time do you know what I mean they're always one of those linebackers that the O-line hate because in practice it's you just like oh we'll just fit up but he's like going full speed every time so I know that those guys are like they practice real hard as well to be fair yeah. so have you ever noticed about Edinburgh that they have the biggest lineman in the country well I say sorry huge. not the country essentially well, but you know, yeah, you get what I'm They're saying. Small. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, biggest lineman in Edinburgh. <laughs> Absolutely massive. So we we've got we've got like a, a Scottish lad on our team that whenever we go up to Scotland, we've got to stop at like certain chip shops on the way back because he orders something <laughs> called a. a honestly, a pr- <laughs> I'm not even joking. Like he he orders something called a pizza crunch. I've got a cat. Uh, oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Cat number one, come back. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us how it, what it's like to be elite. <laughs> this is it. This is elite life, mate. So Will saying he's like, but trying to buy a house. Like I'm in. A, I've got two cats. My wedding's on New Year's Eve, so it's about ten people now. So I'm just trying to like sort all that. It's all oh, fun, yeah, fun and games, it. mate. Wow. But <laughs> I'm totally gone. As soon as the cat walked past the screen, I'm gone. <laughs> There's another cat as well coming. I can feel it. <laughs> are, we actually, are we actually looking for the cat now? The cat's yeah. here. So, 40 minutes in, I know we've talked about his cats. 
and McDonald's in Scotland. <laughs> Mate, that's that's better than last week. Last week we done a show and talked about kicking for like an hour and a half. I surely oh, know I what's to hear about could, football. I can <laughs> carry on. So, Jonathan, what what's your best like brick wall moment apart from seeing Will in a Rey Mysterio mask? <laughs> oh no, it's definitely the worst actually. Um, <laughs> best brick wall moment. Um, it's a weird one actually. Um, I would say it would be. I know not, not to put my finger on one thing. It would be the entire season at UConn Rams. Um, there was so UConn Rams uh, at the time. Let me just give a little backstory. Uh, I will try and make it short as possible. Uh, was headed up by Sam Bloomfield. Um, I don't. Tell, yeah, I don't do short stories. Uh, Sam Bloomfield was the head coach at the time. Obviously, Brit Ball's own Sam Bloomfield. That is, um, and there was a host of other what I would call elite players, basically, as the coaching staff. So it was everyone who just played at UCLan and then just moved into coaching roles. And the guys who were playing before I got there were un- <laughs> unbelievable players. And then we went in... <laughs> That's his missus! <laughs> <laughs> A family affair in the Morehouse household. <laughs> I, literally, I can't go anywhere. Um, <laughs> So then I, I signed up to uni that year. It was me, uh, JJ Worrell. Um, oh, my God. Who else came with me? Eden Beasley. Um, oh, my God. If I don't remember everyone, I'm going to get shouted at. But anyway, I'll just go with those for now. And then to be, essentially to be we fair, just... Mate, the amount of people that's having a go in the chat already, <laughs> I would just crack on. To be fair, everyone, <laughs> who comment, <laughs> everyone who's commented in the chat was pretty much the ones who played on the fun team, actually. I'm um, on, on part-time degrees. I said, yeah. What was your degree? Yeah. What was your uh, degree in? Yeah. Strength, strength and conditioning Chainsaw. and football. Yeah. And football. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it, it was just I bet, a few years. Will's got yeah, loads of them. I bet he has. <laughs> um, how many masters no, it was has Will done? <laughs> uh, yeah, how many years have you done at unis? Uh... <laughs> this is how how many years have you been uni? to? Career. I've been to three. I went to Hull, Hallam, and then UON, University of Nottingham. So you um, went to Hull wow. to do your actual degree, realised it was shout football, went to Hallam, and then chased the championship with Nottingham. Yeah. Got a, got a Div 1 championship <laughs> with Hallam. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, I know, they, Nottingham was tough. But no, the, the entire season at UCLan was just probably my best footballing moment. Um, it was... <laughs> It was such a good year. We had so much fun. Um, un- unfortunately, because it would just make sense to sort of like spiral it back round, it ended uh, in the playoffs against Will um, for the universe. Was it what? What was you called it? What, what uni was it at the time? U O N. Was it Nottingham or was it Hallam? <laughs> no, it was Nottingham. Um, Nottingham. So I'm we... not that mental. Like we, it's just that we played the year before. For Hallam against Glasgow yeah. at the same stadium for the final. Oh, that's really? Not, yeah, that's why I keep getting confused. It's oh, literally that the makes same sense, stadium. Man. I'm not that. I've not had that many hits to the head. But. <laughs> right. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I'd kicked a 55-yard field goal for us to take the lead with 30 seconds left. Humble brag. Humble brag. <laughs> I can also kick, by the way. Um, any European teams looking for a kick, let me know. Um, uh, and then. Um, Kicking's not a real football position. Yeah, it's not at all. Uh, 30 seconds left. Nottingham, two timeouts. Um, and, well, we, we didn't win. Oh, don't even talk to you. I can absolutely well, story top that. I'm going to lead into the worst Brit Ball story ever. So, and Harry's face will start to glow up like lightning in a minute. That was and a good day. I, that was a great we day. Was, I, I think this is probably about right, Harry. I think we was about Titans v um, Merseyside at Merseyside. We've never beaten them in Merseyside. Um, we traditionally just play shit against these guys, even though we're better than them. Uh, I'm joking. I'm wow. joking. Um, no, um, so we was losing, I think, pretty convincingly, weren't we, Harry? I think you guys were up like 28-7 or something like that. You run yeah, the ball all point. over us. Big offensive line. Tough, tough, tough game. Um, got our shit together in the second half. And I think we went up, 
And what was it? I think we went up 34 something, 34, like 28 with 20 seconds to go. Um, and then literally, I think I'm not even reading that comment. It's my sister. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so <laughs> story topping. Fuck you. Um, so I think then we had a stupid penalty off the kickoff, didn't we? Which advanced you guys into yeah. So Hail it's actually Mary. quite funny because the pit. So the, I think you got someone got done for tripping. Okay, so yeah. he kicked him. But if you actually watch the film, the guy was literally getting held to fuck. And then so he's like getting held into the kick and then just tries to trip the guy up. So we actually got like, yeah, an extra penalty where we should have actually probably gone back next to 10 yards from there as well, which is good. Yeah. yeah. Into, yeah. To, so you had two plays, Hail Mary into the end yeah. zone. Um, our DB, one of our DBs, no mentioning no names, Lee Horrocks, <laughs> tried to catch the ball. Uh, it bobbled up, he dropped it into Alex Edgar's hands, I think. Um, eager, yeah. yeah. Eager, um, who, and then that, that's now known as the Mersey Miracle, isn't it? So yeah. I, I couldn't even be mad because we was winning. I, in my head, we won that game. That, that, that didn't happen at the end. It was just the most surreal experience in my life. It was quite good. Um, yeah, I enjoyed that, to be fair. It was quite fun. It was good. Yeah. It was good to feel that. Winning, you've won it, you've done it, and then it just to go like that. And you guys must have felt the same. You just lost the game. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. it's pretty back and forth, I think, at the end. Because yeah. yeah, I wasn't. I was coaching, so I wasn't even playing. Um, yeah. So I was just kind of standing on the sideline, doing not much, just calling, trying to call plays for us. So Ooh, I didn't really have much kind of control. It's one of those where I think sometimes yeah. when you're coaching, you probably get a bit more out of it. Like you enjoy that moment a bit more because you literally have so little control over it you can still be a little bit of a fan when you're on the sideline so when we just like launch a Hail Mary from halfway into the end zone and like bobbles it around and catches it you yeah end up going pretty mental I think I think I basically ran onto the pitch like before they'd even caught it and then just dived on everyone but that was good yeah yeah I enjoyed that too fair Will what's your worst what's your worst ever play in football so make us feel humble what's your first ever play like you my worst Just, ever play. If you don't yeah. say something about the Titans, yeah, he's going to cry, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> no, no, but, just in uh, general. No, no what tit- is your worst ever play? The time the Titans managed to score on us. Like, if you don't do that, he's going <laughs> to... <laughs> I don't think the Titans did score on Tom Wilson that time. Oh, no, they did. Yeah, yeah. I, we did, actually. I think we beat them 21 nil. I, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, but I wasn't there. Was that so that count. <laughs> I don't remember. What? <laughs> That was that I wasn't it? playing that year, so it don't count. Twenty one nil or No, I neither was I. Come on, come on. Go on. Um, twenty twenty eighteen. Was it twenty eighteen? Yeah, twenty eighteen. Brit Ball final. For some reason, I was playing cornerback. Started playing cornerback instead of safety. Um, and we'd been looking at film, and I can't. I think it was like if they're in king, we don't still like if they're in king, like a hundred percent of the time, they like first quarter they'll run it in at a king and so they ran a play action and being a safety i just went oh i'm just gonna tackle someone Woo! ran down field and just left their wide receiver open for a good like 50 yard was that first play wasn't it first play oh yeah yeah i remember <laughs> oh <laughs> and i think i just went down and go oh shit. yeah and then yeah, <laughs> fortunately <laughs> our other uh, actual safeties who were playing safety Ran over and made the tackle, but yeah. it was just not a great start for the game. It kind of set the tone just by, yeah, completely. But is that why out. they were playing safety and you were playing corner? <laughs> 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 Do you guys yeah. not like with his, all, with his all playing like stuff. international? With his all playing international, if he's ever like make a mistake at Brit Ball, do you ever just like think just go and get your helmet for your GB team, like for the GB helmet, and just go up and just go, well, look, look. It wasn't my fault, it was yours, mate. And just walk away and leave it. Like just some little random guy's just rocked up to his first game in his life and you've just made the absolute calamity of mistake and you just blame him. Have you ever have you ever done that? Um, no. I don't know. Do you do, do you do you actually take the like the, the blame? Like so if you've done something wrong, you're gonna be like, Oh, it's my fault. Where well, you can pass yeah. it off on someone else. I definitely take the uh, blame. Yeah, hundred percent. I'd rather take the blame. Yeah, for, That's for what honestly. makes these guys elite. I there you go. We <laughs> take the blame. Yeah, we I just like that won't be. 
I just blame it on Rookie. Why'd you miss your block? <laughs> oh, mate, I've, been, I've, I've done that for all the years I played. Like, some guys come pissing straight past me, and I've turned and went, what the hell are you doing? Like, oh, we've got to be in slide left. Where are you going right for? <laughs> Check it's one of those you you want to say it at the time, but then you, you think oh, I'm going to say this. Maybe film didn't catch it. Maybe it didn't catch it. I'll say it, Mike. That was on you. No, it weren't. Film will catch that. <laughs> Wednesday yeah, the morning. Unfortunately, the film was like filmed live, and there was this whole crowd in front as well. So yeah. it's kind of a bit. A bit All right, obvious. mate. All right, mate. The, you know, like, receivers <laughs> now feel cash. Don't have crowds There's in the a... division I play in, right? Jeez. There was thousands of people there. It was never going to get missed. There was like yeah, a solid... there was at least tens of people at the Brit Bowl final. <laughs> <laughs> there was a solid six people that weren't related to players at the final. <laughs> Two of them so, making there was social distancing for Adam's games. <laughs> Don't need social distancing, mate. Gates exactly. are locked, not allowed in. Private. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want fans. <laughs> yeah, don't want them. Don't even need them. More burgers for me. <laughs> we put the barbecue on just for coaches, mate. That's what we do with our games. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can't believe I said that. Um, what is... So, with you guys playing at such a high level, what is your like training regime? Do you just, like go in? Are you in the gym all the time? Or, or do you just like... Keep to your normal two sessions a week or whatever you do. It your teams like I'm I'm talking from experience. We train twice a week, but what what do you guys do that goes and sets you apart? I think it's it's tough because I think the biggest issue that you see when you come home is that you have to work. Um, yeah. So obviously I work at EP Sports. We can get all your American football stuff. Don't forget about that. Whoa! Um, whoa, whoa. whoa. No sponsors here. Not That's going to cost you that, Harry. That. No, that was free. That was the, that was the price of admission, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, you've done that one. Yeah. So for me, it, like, American football providers. work has been like, work can be pretty lenient. So, like, when I'm at home, like, then I was able, I can go to the gym at lunchtime and still like take an hour twenty minutes for lunch and then still go back and work and we, so they're pretty lenient. Issue like when you're away, you li- like we would practice so we'd lift and have classroom on a Monday. We'd practice Tuesday, practice Thursday. Um, obviously, you're sat around doing nothing with a probably it depends what team you're playing for, but you there's probably a bunch of other guys that are like imports or americans or coaches or whatever so there's another group bunch of guys that you can actually hang out with and then you'll go and lift with them so if you if there's any americans that you're living with that play college they want to lift pretty much every day so you'll go and lift with them every day um and it's totally different as soon as you drop back into real life it's like now i've got to try and go to i try and go to gym every day and you you don't get a chance to do those additional sessions um so you try and squeeze the stuff in around work and it does become a lot tougher once you get back. Um, I think that's the, like for me, I definitely like my best, I played my best football in my, my second season when I was away. Cause I literally, I like, I'd realized that this was the process. This is what I need to do. Like the QB was also like a, um, he wasn't an import technically, but he wasn't like work. He was like a postman kind of part time. And then he would also get paid. So he could do, we would go out and do extra sessions um, throw in so like for me the best football I played when I was literally like yeah I was probably doing football five or six days a week um, whereas now to practice realistic to get a good practice if you get one good midweek practice I think you're doing well um, at, at Brit Ball I think we tried to we've tried to do two and it's a struggle like midweek and then Sunday sessions always a gamble as well like you never know what you're going to get um, so I th- it, for me the biggest thing is kind of controlling what you can control like the lifting stuff you can do on your own like I don't think you have to be a great lifter I think you just have to go do it I don't yeah. think you have to be like super strong I think you just have to go out and actually put work in put together a plan like don't have to be a big plan like we, we always just do like five three one like Jim Wendler stuff so it's like basic lifting really deadlift squat bench and and you just got to go and do it like it doesn't matter how strong you actually are I think big thing for me was, yeah, like realizing that just go and put in the, the time in the gym yourself, that makes a massive difference to, to how you end up playing at this level, especially at Brit Ball, for sure. Harry, have you had, um, have you had like, any off seasons between any of your seasons that you've played where you've really, like, where you could turn around and go, I've smashed it this off season and then noticed yeah. it dramatically come season? Yeah, I think like the one, like between my, like, 
seasons away. Like, so between 2014, 2015, like I just absolutely caned it in the gym. Um, I think obviously going to the gym, having someone to go with. So like me and Rich Merrick worked when we worked together, like we go to the gym all the time together. And it, it's a, it's a massive thing having someone there at the gym with you, like doing the same stuff, pushing you in that way. Um, I think it's one of those though, you just get, and you get strong with age, which really annoys me. So like, my bench is probably better now than it was when I was actually like playing in 2015, but only cause I'm old. Not because, just cause I've been lifting for like get, 10 years. Not because no, I'm just like, get strong, tried, don't really you? you do. You just become you a, that. Like, that's why I always say with under 19s coming up, you're just not a, you're just not a bloke. Like <laughs> you just become a bit more of a bloke as you get older, don't you? Yeah, or you I could think. be as old as Adam and then. You get weak again. <laughs> and, you'll, and you'll find out I'm younger than you, man. That's true. It is true. I am um, actually younger than you, Michael. Jesus. Must know, be with, um, up there. With, with the training that we that, that we're doing, um, especially like for Lyman, it's a little bit different, obviously, when you're playing in um, skill positions. But for Lyman, lifting really is um, like a it's a huge part of it. Really, I mean, you can be conditioned and. People who have played like you know regular footy, dare I call it that, um, and and rugby and stuff like that, you know the fitness is very different from doing that to American football. Um, I can't really explain it, explain it properly. But if people who are a little bit more you know intelligent on that side of things than I am, I'm sure they will be able to explain it more. But the condition side, uh, <laughs> well, until we play cutting. <laughs> conditioning um but as you can say as, as you can see uh well we'll ruin that so excuse me but um are you ever gonna let mean, that go <laughs> never by the sounds it's, of it it's been five years <laughs> you, you think i was really gonna let it go um but no something it was I like just it was just a, just another notch just beat another team dude. Can't you just remember another it, game yeah, yeah i was asleep for most of that i was hung over <laughs> Uh, some of the training that I've actually just recently taken over the last few weeks is uh, strongman lifting. Um, so, you know, stuff like atlas balls, uh, yoke presses, farmer's walks, that sort of thing. Um, so recently just um, been training with a guy called Dean Finnegan at Defiance Strength and Conditioning in Blackpool. Um, so he, yeah, it, that's a shameless plug. Yeah, Defiance <laughs> Strength and Conditioning in Blackpool. Uh, he is uh, taking members on at the moment for a free session. If anyone was wanting to get involved with that. Um, but is, no, is, that, is that the guy that you're sponsored by? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, so he has, fortunately, just sponsored me. Um, no, I am not receiving thousands and thousands. Um, he's just given me a gym membership. Um, and I'm more than happy with that. Uh, but no, he's he's very clued up. And it's a very good gym. Uh, I put something on my Instagram the other day. It's literally like a playground in there. Um, for anyone who just enjoys lifting weights at all. It's absolutely unbelievable. There you go. Yeah. Um, there I am. Classic Sounds Morass right. picture. Um, so, yeah, it's... it's uh, strongman lifting, I think, for me, is really, really going to be helping um, from the start of the season. My strength already, I can feel it, is, you know, going above and beyond. And um, with this now, essentially, with COVID being in place, and I had the year off before that, um you know, I can see my strength going through the absolute roof now. So um, I am really looking forward to getting back to it now. See, uh, see where it goes. So what, what would you say to like these young guys that are coming through? Like I, I coach like, under 17s, under 19s, and it's quite difficult for these guys to get in the gym as much as they'd like. I mean, don't get me wrong. We've got some guys that, I mean, I've got a guy called Kieran at the minute. He's just gone down to Bristol Pride. And this guy's doing strongman training at 16. And I mean, this is this is a guy that's been told from this from the gym that he's trained in, quit American football, you're gonna make a living from carrying weights, basically. Like he's a he's a unit, I'm not gonna lie, but there's not there's not other people that can get like that. Like there is some guy, like young kids out there that are playing even even playing at the level of like Great Britain juniors and Things like that, that that can't make the gym. Would you still say the even doing like push ups, sit ups, things like that, that going out for a run, things like that, what's benefit in a way or Yeah, I think like first thing is they just gotta play as much football as possible. Yeah. That's like number one step one, right? Like yeah. I think guys will invest in the gym once they realise that it's gonna be beneficial to them at football. So once you realise, once you get to a level where just 
playing football, now you're going against guys that are smashing you and you can't do anything about it and you're picking up injuries and stuff like that and you're soft because you don't work out, that's when you'll start to invest. Like it, Definitely for me, that was when it, I decided, right, this is now I've got to like properly crack on with this lift and stuff. Like we, I was playing, it wasn't Div 2 then, but it was like, I don't even know at what level it was. It was like 2013, so it was like, Div one and a like a weird prem and but we were playing like against some of the teams that are in like Div two now, um, and it wasn't very difficult for me personally. But then when you go to that next level, you realise that like I can't get by by just the kind of knowledge I have from playing now. So I've really got to kind of invest. But I think it's on coaches as well to an extent. I think so. You guys giving them the kind of signposting what they need to do. Do you know what I mean? Like if you can't get to the gym, these are the things that we can do. These are, and they need to be coming to you and asking that information as coach, like how am I going to get better? Yes. Playing football is going to help me. And that's why I enjoy doing. So that's why I'm doing it. Um, the lifting part, maybe I don't enjoy it. Like I don't really like lifting. I don't really like it. I still don't like it. I imagine linemen that get to a good level, probably like lifting to be honest with you. Um, but I think young guys, it's tough because it's not like super exciting and stuff like that. So it's it's for coaches to kind of help them signpost them what's the best way for them to access and condition themselves, whether it's just playing more. Do you know what I mean? I think there's there's definitely value to just have playing as much football as possible, um, in my opinion, anyway. You see, for, for me as a coach, I've always come from, I've coached a lot of other sports, not just American football. Mm. And you always get that with the younger guys is, oh, you don't want them in the gym until they're 16, 17 years old. And then you look at guys that are training to go to college football, basically. Mm. And you're thinking, these kids are in the gym from like a crazy young age. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, it's hard to, as a coach for me to tell the young guys at the team, like, listen, I don't want you guys going and lifting weights. Like, don't be putting heavy weights on the bar and doing all of this. Like, I, the way I try to coach is to get them mainly doing, like, using their body, basically. So doing press-ups, sit-ups, all, all of that sort of thing, rather than going and lifting heavy. And then when they get to, a, I would say, probably, like, 15, 16, they'd start, they would start lifting, but lifting light to start off with and, I mean, shit, what would so, you guys do? Yeah, sorry, Michael. Yeah, I was, no, I was just going to say, obviously, <clears throat> here's the rubber stuff that you can do other than lifting. Like, Will, for example, do you do any work on, like, flexibility or um, has playing other sports helped you? Or, you know, is there anything you can do that is maybe a little bit more fun? Um, I don't, I'm not saying flexibility or, is, you know, is there a real stress on, like, stretching, etc. cetera? Um, just if, as an alternative, really. I, I wish I was doing more flexibility stuff. I tried yoga <laughs> and uh, tried is the operative word. I was, I'm no good at it. But um, I think just playing as much sport as possible. Like, I originally came from like playing rugby from like when I was 14. And I think like, I think that's changed now. But I think back when I started, I think a lot of people came from playing rugby, be it league or union. And there's a lot of transferable skills. And being that they were alternate seasons in kind of youth football, you know, you play during the summer, you play football during the summer, play rugby during the winter. When you're young, you don't need an off season. I think I think there's a lot of there's a lot of kids nowadays who will go to university and if they're playing like a good level of university, they'll be like, Oh well, I've got to have an off season, relax, chill out. And it's like, well, you you're young, you'll bounce back, nothing's gonna to hurt too much. Just play mm -hmm. senior and, and play senior, have a go. If you you might not even make the first team, just just have a go. But I say just playing continuous sports regardless of what it is like even if it's like rugby football like soccer football or like cricket even baseball just something that's that's keeping you active during your off season rather than kind of sitting there and thinking I'm just going to stay static and lifting because what I think a lot of people do in skill positions which sometimes mistake is they'll think oh off season I've got to bulk I've got to put loads of weight on got to get massive ready for the season but then they forget to actually move around during that time so they're really good at moving a bar from here to here when they get back to football, but their hips are completely static because they've not been moving them. They've not been using it whilst during the off season. So I think when you're young and you've got that energy, just, just play as much sport as possible. Like, I mean, when I was young, we were playing like you'd have like 
three different sports on a weekend. You'd just get up and do it and you'd probably go out drinking as well. Like, <laughs> and you'd just do that. Like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you'd be out playing at the park with your mates, kicking the ball around. Saturday, you'd play rugby or something and go out on the piss. Then Sunday, you'd play your football game and again, go out on the piss. And then you're back in college the next day. You know, it's, yeah. I think a lot of kids today overemphasize <laughs> how much, or, or, they, or they think the body can't take it quite as much and they think they have to train like professionals who, when you look at NFL players, you know, they're all kind of 20s to 30s and, and their bodies couldn't take it because they're playing at such a high level. But when you're a kid and you're playing amateur sports in the UK, just play as much as you can. I think that's that's what I'd say. I definitely agree. You, you think the most most of the players that you see, especially in the NFL now, um, and especially Americans, they're all multi-sport athletes. Um, I, you know, especially being in the NFL, you know, the majority of them are way over six, six one, six two. Um, a lot of them have got a basketball background. Um, some of them, you know, played ice hockey. And some of them, like, well, you look at Russell Wilson. You know, I think did he actually play professional baseball at one point? You know, it's for a contract. Yeah, you got, yeah. You got a contract signed. Yeah. So I think. Yeah, I think it, the the biggest thing, sort of echoing what both of you have said there, really is playing sports and and actually doing the movements of what you're doing or what you're going to be doing is better than any lifting that you can you physically do. Um, yes, it does help to be strong, but I think talking from experience of playing over here and playing abroad, the difference is when you play abroad is everyone is at the same level as you or better but they are also stronger or faster. Over here, you can definitely, like, especially like you said, Harry, you were just better players than the players that you played against. You didn't lift. You didn't need to. But if that's if at the time that's what your thing is, I just want to go and enjoy playing football at the weekend and, you know, I don't care if I don't batter everyone around or whatever, then fine, yeah. But if, it, if you are wanting to go to the next level, definitely, <laughs> like, especially for someone who is undersized at their position, I yeah. think something, if you are going to, like, if you are going to stand out from being something, you know, to be something else, you do have to be stronger no matter what. That is that is my opinion. And I think it does, I mean, the, that doesn't take away from the weight side. I think Charles Dixon commented there, by weights and lift at home, I've never been to a gym. That's actually a true fact for him. I think when he started playing, um, he looks like you can see there, he's a big chap there. Uh, I think he's put on a stone every year, muscle and fat um, combined. I think equal measure to, to make himself the way he is now. And I think he did that over six years. Now he's probably might attempt to go for GB this year. And now he's been offered to go and play abroad and stuff. But again, that's somebody who did start as undersized and stuff, but he plays defensive line. The weight part is important, but what we're saying is it's not the be all and end all. If you can't hit the gym at all day every day, probably the more important well, has equal importance is just learning how to play sport, be competitive. Um, because I always used to refer to American football as like a sport for misfits. So if you weren't good at any other sport, like you give American football a try or you're the big oh, that's guy. That's what for. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I think that's going to change because I think more people are coming into the sport at a younger age. I mean, other than Will, I know I personally didn't play any U4 junior football. I know Johnny, you're the same. Harry, they're the same. So, obviously, you know, we all would have had to be good at different sports growing up in order to, I think, to transgress into this. Are any of you guys... Can hand on heart say so you just was never good at any other sports and you just took to American football. Oh yeah, um, I was terrible. I was I'm good at everything. Oh, pretty shocking. <laughs> yeah, I'm, right, okay. I'm pretty good at everything I try. <laughs> Apart from golf. <laughs> Apart from I'm golf. actually no no. Anyone who knows me knows I take up a sport and leave after six weeks. Um just and then move on to something else. But golf I tend to be Why is okay everything. At. I've bought, honestly, I bought everything. Um, and then when I turned around, and, I bought a Riddell Speed with a full face cage and a visor. I was like, oh shit, no, I really am committed this time. <laughs> and stayed. Um, you it up, but didn't, you, didn't you sell a drum set last, last month for like the value of 500 no, no. quid that you bought when you played drums no. once? <laughs> I sold my bike last month. It was drums the month <laughs> before. Yeah. Drums no, the month that was this time last year. What are you even talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, um, I think just for that that stuff though that Will was saying and, and John was saying there, it's like the best, like the guys now that are playing at the top in uh, playing GB. Like if you go and ask the large majority of those guys played uni, and the large majority of those played back to back. 
Do you know what I mean? That's like mm -hmm. in that crucial initial period when you start understanding football and you start playing. Like playing back to back seasons just gives you so much kind of game knowledge and you start yeah. to understand what's going on. Do you know what I mean? Like like we said, well, we were saying before, right? Like you actually only get good when you get to like 28 and by then you're like already pretty old and then you're not the same kind of athlete. Like you have to kind of cram in that that initial learning like as fast as possible. So it, all these guys that are starting at youth, they have such a massive advantage over any of the guys that are that are kind of even in the, the GB team now like if you go and speak to them there's there's not a huge amount that played at youth level do you know what I mean there's not mm, yeah. so like for me I started playing when I was 20 years old like these guys that have the opportunity that are already playing the game now and probably playing it like say alongside other sports like just continue to do it and play it as much actual football as you can like for me I went played at uni then played night oaks and went I went traveling in Australia, played in Australia, and then came back, played football again. And those like just that that short period of intense football, it will just push you on that and you'll have a go and you'll get to really good or you'll decide that I know what level I want to be at now. I think. Yeah, I mean just I mean what I mean I we'll go into this probably more in the next couple of podcasts, podcasts. Um but I, I, I found I found that coaching really helped me. I feel like that slowed the game down. Now I'm not a big fan of coaching. I, I don't think I'm a very good coach. Um, don't really enjoy it that much. I'll be honest, which is controversial to an old uh, like Adam who absolutely loves it. But that for me, there's almost that light bulb moment where the game just slows down. And um, when you've done a bit of coaching and seen it from the sideline, do you guys feel that if you don't have that time or you are picking up the injury, maybe the coaching? element over the summer so I mean someone will always have you to coach won't they if you know if you've been uni ball um, I'm sure there's an under 17s team who utilise your experience and just be assistant and then vice versa if there's always a university team who's always looking for coaches do you think that do you, is it just me who feels like that could help as well if you have got that injury and you don't want to risk risk injury over the summer or winter vice versa yeah, I think if if you are injured, it's still it's a good chance to any any football is good football, you know, and just any chance to to stay involved in football is going to get you get your knowledge up. Um, I mean, if you're not injured, definitely go and play. I think that's yeah. see number one is 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 keep playing. Um, I mean, like Harry said, I think I've played for like eleven eleven years now, but for like fifteen sixteen seasons, yeah. and that really intense period where I played about seven seasons in about four years. Yeah. I think that that's where most of my knowledge and, and playing development came because you were moving from system to system, learning different playbooks and learning how you play with different players as well. I think that's really crucial in like your formative years of football. So if you, if you play in uni ball, I think you've, you've got to go and find, and I, I suppose it's like the same, like say with coaching, as long as you're getting that football fix, over the summer and you're you're learning a different scheme for example i think that's yeah. going to really benefit you yeah i think i think a huge one um that's kind of echoes that is if you are a dare i call it a one club man like a steven gerrard kind of guy and you've only ever been in one place um or only ever played for one team i think it is absolutely essential for any experience whether as a player or coach to definitely be part of another setup somewhere else, no matter what. Even if it's not as good as the team that you're playing for, definitely go and find out how someone else does it. Um, Gen think... Genuine question then for you all, actually, because this is something we touched on last week. Um, if you you guys are all good players and all game changers for your re retrospective teams, if, for example, and you all are now play in the Prem, and we'll, you maybe alluded this to before, do you believe that, it's okay to move teams for a better team because, you know, you're paying to play this sport or should you get the players around you, um, you know, to, to bring that team up? What, what do you think is the best method as, as, as an elite player on the team? Is it okay to just go, I'm selfish, I want to go and win a national championship and I want to go and help a very good team? Or do you waste those years, in inverted commas, playing at those lower, livings, lower divisions to drag your team up with you if it's your local team? I mean, personally, for me, I, I never went to, I never just went and chose the best team. I've not, you know, there's a reason I've not travelled down to London and moved there. You know, it's, um, I just that moved to the really nearest. expensive. <laughs> yeah, I hate London with a passion. It's a horrible, expensive place. Anywhere a pint is over a fiver, not going. Not for me. Uh, not for me. Uh, to Blackpool, you'd be sound. 
<laughs> but, uh, I was always chasing Wolverine. coaching. Coaching was what I was chasing. I just wanted to be a better player myself. So I just followed the nearest path to get better. So I started at kind of the Nottingham Caesars and they, they were a great place to start and it was my local club. And then I was at University at Hull. And so in between was Sheffield Giants. So obviously they were in the Prem at the time or Sheffield Predators at the time. Um, and that was just like the next step up. And even though at the time they weren't, they weren't doing great, they were on the way up. But um, I was just trying to get the best coaching for me possible. So I just kept okay. following the coaching. And I think, I think if you want to advance yourself in the game there's nothing wrong with just you know sticking your neck out and trying a different team you're not going to know yeah. you're at the best team for you if you don't try a team yeah so what number did you wear at the at the press uh 45 oh i might i might be able to send you a present soon mate <laughs> <laughs> i think I, we got we got given um off one of the sheffield youth teams because the the thought split apart from the the giants when they formed we were given a load of like jerseys that all the gold pred jerseys, and we use them as oh. practice jerseys. So, I don't think there's a 45 in there. Have you got it? Have you? <laughs> Will I have it? I'm surprised it's not hung up behind his. I know, I'm gonna say, I, he's I, just gonna I, do I, this. I, Boom. The flag comes what? down, and there it is. What yeah, that's it. Right. Will is it? He's a shirt collector. If I've ever seen 100%. a shirt in my time, I'm one of them right there. <laughs> in fact, from the way down my Instagram, I've got post somewhere like, surely you can't you must be living on your own if your room looks like that i'm gonna say like your missus that can't allow that this is the office yeah i was gonna office. say can i just uh, say if you think he's moved well. like that before this <laughs> podcast you're wrong he's moved those helmets in just to 100%. be on camera i've got some helmets up here let's see oh oh, oh which oh, helmet here we go <laughs> okay <laughs> It's oh, nice one. Helmet I was expecting. It's yeah. Oh wow! I was hoping for a different helmet. Well, here we go. And then we just like oh. put it back. That's how we do it. I was expecting like to throw it over his over his shoulder and the cat to catch it. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the cat? <laughs> so, one one of the last few uh, questions I've got for you is: I mean, we could probably go on this one for a Definitely. while, but have it, have you guys? I mean. We've all seen the the picture of Phoebe, the GB women's player that's got the that she's coming out with her GB uniform on and she's she's talking to two young girls in the stand and it's that like true role model moment. Have you guys in your playing career had that moment yet where you've seen like someone of the younger generation, you've just been like, they're gonna play now because we've had this little conversation or yeah, you, you've just felt like, wow, I kind of believe, like, I was just playing for me and now I've realised that there's other people watching this sort of situation. Um, well, for, for me, absolutely not. This is a very weird answer, but I still, feel, I still feel very, very, very new to this sport. Now, this is actually, I'm actually going into my sixth year playing. Um, so, I mean, compared to Will, who's, you know, a true veteran of the game, you know, um, <laughs> This is, you know, he's got more shirts than I've got, you know, sports that I've quit. Um, <laughs> but, you know, in terms of being that guy, for me, no, absolutely not, because I still look up to other people um, as role models, um, people who probably wouldn't even expect it as well at times. Um, Sam Bloomfield, even though he's a quarterback and wide receiver turn quarterback, you know, he's a role model for me. He's the one who actually got me in um, from when we played it, when we was at college together. Um, but he's he is and probably will be a role model for me um, until he retires. And well, maybe I'll be able to be a role model, I guess. But no, for me, I'm um, I'm still going along that journey at the moment, so I can't answer that one on the, on that side of things. No, I'm, I'm the same pretty much to be honest with you. I think I think part of the issue is like exposure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So exposure to who actually are good players, who are good teams. Um, and not that, like, I'm not trying to plug EP Sports too much, but oh. like part of the part of the thought behind, like, we have our like, elite players and stuff like this is is trying to increase the exposure of these guys that we know are good. Do you know what I mean? Are, like, or maybe playing in different countries or playing in uh, university teams that are really good. The guys actually don't know about. Like, there might be guys that are playing in Div One 
northeast or whatever it may be that you have never heard about but are absolutely crushing it and you'll never know about them because there isn't the exposure like yeah. there, there has been um and that's a it's a, a whole like sport wide issue, do you know what I mean? It's not like one thing, but things like this are the are the are the steps that need to be taken, do you know what I mean, to continue increasing exposure, people understanding like who's good, but then it's it's all that fact of like making everyone good is great, but if there's no young people playing it, then how are they supposed to see these people as role models? Yeah. If there's yeah. if there's no youth teams, like how many youth teams is there overall? Probably less yeah. than there is Div Two team, adult teams, right? And that's so, what, and that's what we're that's one of the things we're trying to do with this. Is like this week we've got Elite, and then uh, Adam probably what might be saying next week we're jumping right back into under 19s mm. and next the week after we'll go up again to like high senior football, and then you know we're we're just trying to like I said hopefully gain like an under 19s audience as well for us, yeah. but showing them people like you guys, you're great. You know we wouldn't have asked you on if you're not one great players, but two really good ambassadors for your own team. You have fun. Mm on and off the field, always, you know, all of you, you know, really good sportsmen as well. So you'll always like shake hands, have a good, you know, good laugh with the opposing side. And that's kind of what I see as a role model. So the one who always yeah. sticks out to me is uh, Tom Levitt. I think I said his name right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I still, I still reach out to Tom now um, about little things, about big things. You know, I see him doing his strongman lifting. I always try and get him to come back and play football for the Tamworth, for Tamworth and, just to see him playing again because he's just someone I like to watch and, you know, pick his brain over different things, you know, how he became a GP starting centre, etc. And I think that you've got to be able to find those people and just be okay to reach out to him and know what point you are. And I'm sure you guys would all love to help somebody who is a DB for, you know, your team or, you know, or a starting quarterback for a junior team or whatever. And I'm sure your guys' socials will always be open to those guys if you've not had that moment as of right now. You see, I would love for you guys to have your GB training session at the same venue as the juniors. Yeah. So, do you know what I mean? So the juniors can finish their training session and then come watch you guys work out. And so the coaches can literally turn around and go, this is where you're working towards. At the minute you're playing under 17s and under 19s, this is where you want to, you're, you're trying to work towards. You want to play a GB men's team or women's or whatever. And I, I'd love to see more I'd love to see a more rounded approach by the, the national setup where we can start getting the kids involved. So they've they've got a clear pathway through the system and say, like, this is where you are now. This is what you've got to do to earn that spot. This is where you've got to be to get there. And th- things like that is, is, is a big deal for me as a coach. Like, I, I want to see that pathway system put in place. Like, I mean, all you guys said, you, you pretty much started at, like, university age and I mean, we've got kids now starting at like eight years old. And you know what I mean? Like, we, we have kids turn up on a Sunday, like eight years old, like putting on flag belts and running around. And they love it. Like, mm. absolutely love it. And all I think back to is when I was eight and I was kicking a ball around on a field and I had no clue about our national sport, soccer. Do you know what I mean? Like, it was just, it was one of them. Like, these kids these days have got, they can look on the telly and watch their NFL, but realistically, they're going to be in bed by the time the games are on. So then you've got the chance to go down to Wembley, um, what, like four four times a year, if we've got like a run of games going on. And that's it. That's that's what they've got to choose. So I'd love for like our national team to, to actually be our like pride and joy and we can show the players off and be like, guys, look, this is our... Our guys, like th- like what you're doing with EP, Harry, like you highlight players, like we want to do that. Like for me, I would love to have all the, all the squad highlighted. Look, this is this guy, he plays for such and such. If you've got a chance to go down, go see him play. Like I'd love that. I think that would grow the game massively and give, it would give, it would give kids something to look up to be able to, to target and go forward and do. Like, I've, I've going back to the whole role model situation thing. It was probably last last season. We were the, our adult team, so normally I don't have anything to do with the adult team. I just coach at the academy, but for whatever reason, I was there coaching this this time. And there was a family that travelled up. Ben and mine were in gates. Uh, they travelled up from just like North Yorkshire way, so it, it got an hour or so to get to the game. Um, 
two parents and two kids. And the kids were loving it. They were they were clapping. They were getting involved in all of the game. And then, I mean, we got hammered. And well, I can't remember who we were playing, but we got absolutely hammered. And these kids did not care about the score, but they wanted to get a picture with the players that were coming off. Mm. And one of our guys was like, oh, no, I'll do it after. I'll go get a shower first. And I was like, mate, they don't want to see you in jeans and a T-shirt. They want, to, they want a picture with you in your kit. I was like, get yeah. back over there, stick your helmet on, smile and get a picture with these kids. He was like, I don't know who they are. I was like, it doesn't matter. I was like, these young kids want a picture with you. This might be their first ever thing of American football. Get in there now. You say, oh, yeah, I think you've got you've got to put that self consciousness to the side, haven't you? You've got to think it's not about about me; it's about growing the game, isn't it? It just shouldn't matter what well, you're a role model for. Like, I'm not an elite player like you guys are, but I've been approached before of people because they've got a big guy on their team who they want to move faster, um, and they're playing offensive line. So, like, they'll say to me, like, "What do you do? Do you know what I mean?" And for me, that's that's nice for me to. Well, that's because I'm a big guy playing American football, which is nice to see. That still people recognise that I can do that at a decent level, but it doesn't. But you, you just find it in different ways, don't you? In terms of helping people out, and just always make sure you don't close those doors to people. I think in, in terms of being a role model, especially when you play, you know, at the highest level, like you know, we we do, you definitely, definitely do have that thing upon you where you have to represent, and you do have to pass something down to the next generation. You know, they say about. Um, all the best coaches in the world, you know, like um, in um, footy coaches, sorry, you know, Arsene Wenger, Alex Ferguson, guys like that who weren't necessarily the greatest players. You know, I think as a player, at this point, no matter what, you do have to give something back. And if you don't, you, you're only killing the sport that you love. You know, it's, it's the whole part of be part of the solution, not the problem um, kind of thing. If you're not a good coach, you know, if, if you coaching isn't your thing or if you don't have the time for coaching at least, um, as a lot of people don't, you, there's got to be something that you know. I believe players can do um, once a month, at the very least, that can you know help grow the game. Whether it be in the women's game, you know, the flag game or the junior game, or you know, God forbid, I even say the referee side of the game, um, you know, which is a unfortunately a dying breed as well. But I think the growth of the game is down to the likes of our age, no matter what. I mean, even if even if a player they, they can't get into coaching for whatever reason, um, if they can't go into refereeing, even if a player can grab his family and say, "We're going down to watch my old team play this game at home," and then we'll go there and we'll make loads of noise. Like yeah. if you if you've got one like an old boy there, they shouting, screaming, making loads of noise. The odd other few people that's there will be doing the same thing. And then that'll gradually build, and then all of a sudden you've got a fan base there coming week yeah. in, week out. Like, I mean, we'll I mean, all know more than anyone because Tamworth probably travel better than any other team. And when you go to a Tamworth home game, even if being twenty-one nil, the sideline are still really loud. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, we, but it's, yeah, it's, I think it's uh, good Tamworth, the 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 Knicks Nation or the family, as we call them, with a PH, um, they're amazing. <laughs> they're, <laughs> I could hear that eye roll, John. They're amazing. I think they're, they're, they come down, I think a lot of them are friends and family, but it'd be nice to grow that even more and see that also with with other teams as well. I think we're really lucky at Tamworth to have them, but I think do there's no reason why the other teams... Do you do anything you know what, different as far to as ensure I know, that happens? I, I don't think we do. Uh, I was, it's not I as if these we're... have been like a, a massive team for a long time. Some of, you know, it's a relatively new new team, isn't yeah. it? In its in its infancy, really, as a team. Um, but you don't you don't do anything different, or because it's it's noticeably larger at Tamworth games. It was noticeably larger in the national final you played in than the semi. And you know, when you are on telly, you can hear the, that Knicks Nation, as it were. Do you think even just giving it that name and giving it that kudos, like, has grown that in particular, or? It's just become a bit of a reputation for you guys, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think part of it is is giving it that name and, and feeding it as, as much as we can. You know, we try and we try and advertise them and give them their their props. You know, if yeah. you, you've you've played against us at home after every home game, we'll go up and and cheer the the guys who've come along to watch. They've you know they've given up a whole weekend, well not weekend, whole whole Sunday or whatever to to spend watching us 
running up and down a field. So the least we can do is, is afford them. And that's something that you see in, in Europe. You guys played in Europe. I'm sure you guys did it after each of your games as well. You always go and kind of thank the crowd and thank them for, for giving up their time to come and watch you and support you. And I think it's... Uh, yeah, I suppose I at, at what point would you not go over to... Because obviously most teams would just do the free cheers for the fans and point to the fans. Like, do you make a dedicated effort to go over to them? Because it might be a bit awkward if there's one man and a dog there, but surely <laughs> that <laughs> would start to emphasise more and more people coming. I'm just wondering if you've ever done... Because you do... You can, yeah, you we normally go... Yeah, we do like that as a, you know, you do the handshaking thing and then we immediately go around and before we like circle up together, we'll go straight and applaud the, the crowd. And I think yeah. something that I think so, a lot of a lot of teams do, like say in Europe and stuff. And then after that, then we'll yeah. do the whole three cheers things to everyone. Yeah. But just a little thing. And I think it, it's something that hopefully we can build on and, and make it even bigger. And like I said, something that nice that if Baffa could draw on that, and, and try and advertise more and get more people down who aren't just friends and family and stuff and try and drag people from all corners <laughs> and watch the product I mean, or whatever it's put out. It is. It's, it's criminal. I mean, we've all probably been to a Wembley game. You go there and there's not a sign of Baffer. You've got 100,000 people. Those tickets sell out like that. We've all probably tried to get them after they've sold out, etc. I think it's criminal that there's no advertising goes into that network of people who clearly absolutely love the game and are willing to pay £70 to go and watch it. Granted, we're not the NFL and it's not the same product, but I would go and happily watch a Sunday league team and I used to go and watch Berry and Oldham near me when I'd take my, you know, my dad used to take me and that was always something we'd do. Surely it's the same thing in American football, but we just don't reach out to that network, I don't think, successfully. You know, I don't think there's ever been en- enough exposure about the sport. I've so many people around well here. So Sorry. I mean, just, just quickly on that, the Tamwa thing there, we actually, in our youth and junior team, changed what we do on a game day because of Tamwa. So it, was a been, it would have been a few years ago. We were at uh, youth finals years ago, and Tamwa were there, and we didn't even play against them, but we were on a pitch next to them, so youth 5v5, and obviously it's smaller pitches. And their fans were right next to us. And I was trying to call players and they're sitting with their Vuvuzelas. And honestly, I, I was like, what are you doing? I was like, I, you can't. That. I was like, <laughs> I, was, I kept turning around. I was like, guys, you have took a time out. Just chill. <laughs> let, let me get my player to my team. Mm. And honestly, like that annoyed us so much. Like I was like, I couldn't get the play and we're going to have to change everyone. So... We've put in things like hand signals and things now. And then this year, this year we went to Britball and I got all the parents. I was like, right. What if because we got it, we got a letter from Baffa saying, Oh, you're not allowed Vuvuzelas at, at finals this year. And what? I was like, Oh, honestly, that's, that's a bit criminal. Bit criminal. That is, that's that's Baffa. Let's not fill the stadium, let's ban Vuvuzelas <laughs> And I mean, <laughs> I can I can understand it, right? But I was like, right, okay. it says nothing about drums. So I was like, right. To all the parents, I was like, right. Do you have drums or anything? Oh yeah, I can get drums. We were asking. Johnny's just sold it. Honestly, schools <laughs> and things for drums and triangles and stuff. There's like, there's a picture of our sideline where they've all gone and got uh, orange and green like face paint and stuff, and they're like banging on the drums and stuff. And honestly, teams hated us. And I was like, this is what's happening from now on. Like I was yeah. like. I was like, let Tamworth bring their Vuvuzelas. We've got drums. <laughs> I was like, honestly, that was the best the, the best day of my coaching. I mean, we didn't even win. I think we were oh, one, one game. But just the noise alone, I was like, right, can you... I was like, be quiet, we're on offense now. They're like, oh, yeah, no more. And then they were like, I was like, defense, come on. Get the noise up again. They're like, banging away on them. I was like, oh, this is class. And I just... I can't imagine what it must be like for you when that's happening. Like it's that whole kind of twelfth man thing, though, isn't it? You know, feel it's that's going to encourage more and more people to come as well because they feel like they're having an impact. Yeah. And they get to almost play the game with you as well whilst they support, and it's kind of brings that sense of fun. Whereas you get some people who who might come along as friends and family, and they're like, "Oh, that's great," you know. Will's on the field, or Harry's on the field watching run, and okay, yeah, he's run, he's caught ball. Don't really know what's going on, but oh, I get to blow this Vuvu Zella and irritate people. Yeah, great, I'm gonna have a great time. Yeah, I think that is where it starts, though. Like, obviously, I think there's a balance between having a product. 
Like if you were, if you guys were playing at that like cricket pitch where you used to play, are you going to have people come to watch the same level as what you have cur- at your current where you currently play where you got a stand? Probably not. Um, so having the ability for people to sit in a stand is is a big thing, and then it's obviously finding that level of stadium that's the right level. So sitting in a thirty thousand seat stadium isn't that useful when you've got yeah. maybe five hundred people come to watch. Um, yeah. So finding that level for where where is local to you is key i think really to like build those guys like help build it and it does start friends and family though like my like my mum won't come and watch me when we play jmo because there's nowhere to sit like do you know what i mean like it's basic like if she she would come and watch me play gb like every gb a game at home you're in a you're in new river or where worcester she came watch jmo why like there's no like i experience for fans for, at that level there where there's no no seats like there's no kind of product um to like they don't like call out the offense and defense just little simple things like that that i know like in europe they'll do so they'll call out one team's offense call out one team's defense you'll have you'll run out they'll they have announcer things like this and and the large majority of people in the stand are you know them do you know what i mean They're the same people every time and the friends and family um, they'll come and watch the games every time and there'll be a very limited number of people that aren't actually related to anyone or haven't played yeah, previously. Yeah, exactly. like, I mean, you, see, you see some of the, the bigger clubs now starting to build more of a, a like a game day experience. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And I think I think we can't expect people to turn up and watch a game if we're not giving them a reason to turn up. And necessarily that reason doesn't have to be winning. They just want the experience of going to an American football game. That's it. Like, I think American sports in general, like the product is amazing, right? You go and watch an NBA game, no idea what's going on, but there's yeah. absolutely loads of crap going on. Do you know what I mean? They're shooting yeah. T-shirts and, and it's not going to be that level. It's not. But there has to be an element yeah. of a product that is being yeah. like delivered to the fans. Like if you actually yeah. expect people to pay any money to come and watch. So yeah. like it has to start with friends and family and then it'll bu- it builds from there. Like, Obviously, Thomas has done a great job so far, and it's just got to continue. The exact reason, yeah, I was going to say that's the exact reason I can always take my missus down to Wembley with me because mm. she doesn't watch the game whatsoever. She doesn't have a clue what's going on, but it's everything else around it. Trying to catch a t-shirt or yeah. going to spend the fifty quid getting a jag top she'll never wear again <laughs> with Blake bottles on the back. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But it's all like it's, <laughs> it's all a part. Of, I don't know, <laughs> and now she's a Jags fan apparently, but it's all a part of that experience. Isn't it? It's more than just just watching the game it's about mm. creating that and I don't think we do enough and it's probably a shame because a lot of us well you guys in particular sorry, not me but you guys will almost not probably experience that and hopefully it should start to come later on when we, we you know we'll see that knock on effect and hopefully the game will start to change it's just a shame um, I don't feel like that's a main priority right now for no for, I think it's sport. tough though because it's whose priority is it like whose yeah. job is it to generate fans like at yeah. your club at Titans like is the GM going to do that? Do you know what I mean? The GM's got enough stuff to do, whoever the GM mm. is. Do you know what I mean? True, like, yeah. So are you going to pay someone to come and market your team? Probably not because you haven't got any money because everyone, you're just running the club as it is. So mm. actually, unless they're going to bring in funds themselves, you can't actually pay anyone to do that. So I mean, unless could... you know someone purposely that has already does it and is willing to give their time over and over again without any mm. kind of pay, um, then it's really tough to actually like just start to generate a plan and then put it into action. I think. I mean, you could just do what soccer do, like at the lower league levels, where they're like, "Oh, you're you're a pro. We'll give you like fifty quid a week, but you've got to sell twenty tickets or something." Daft like that. Do you know what I mean? Like, if Buffer moved towards, I'm going to plug my article I wrote a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> but I wrote an article a few weeks ago where I said the prem should just be the prem, so no relegation from it. Mm. And for me, that's well, like super a, league, isn't it? Yeah, like like a super league sort of thing where mm-hmm. that's the prem, that's your market. Like you can put that out to sponsors and things. You can market it perfectly, and have that as your right guys. You can have a couple of pros in there now or semi pros, however you mm-hmm. just want to be cast and just be yeah. guys. You just now just work for us. Just a part time or whatever. You're doing this. Go out and or help us out. Go on where you go to the gym. Put some flyers up. Or do you know what I mean? You can do. That sort of thing where yeah, there, there is a market for it. I mean, we've done something I, a, a year or so ago now where obviously I work in school, so I go in a load of local schools in the area. 
and we just give out tickets to kids, just mm. printed out some tickets and just give them to kids. And it was like, yeah. get get your family in like a game for free. And we were mm. getting people at our games all the time. I mean, it yeah. wasn't loads, but there was enough people there. They would come, they'd have a barbecue, they'd watch the game, they'd be yeah. like, oh, I'd have to stand on the sideline and make sure I didn't swear because I'm like teaching in the school or the week after. Yeah. And <laughs> it was like, yeah. it was it was great because I mean, the, half the kids would come down, watch a game, think it was great because they've only played flag at school. Mm. Yeah. And then go, how old have I got to be to do that? Oh, well, it's 13 mm. and it's going to be, but we'll have a flag team until then. Oh, yeah. when when training? Well, training's yeah. this time, come down. So then we'll get yeah, kids yeah. to play and the parents still turn up to watch the games anyways. Yeah. I think the issue is that you're doing that because you like it, though. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. No one's paying you to do, to give out tickets at school, unless they are. Do you know what I mean? Like, so unless every team has that, then that just won't happen, unfortunately. Well, I suppose that's about your team being like, I mean, we have a theory where it's like if every if, if we've got 100 members on our team and they all do 1% mm. more, then theoretically you're 100% better year on year. Do you know what I mean? And that's, it's about challenging everyone within your team to find out what niche they have that can help support your team because yeah. at the end of the day, like we we compare ourselves again at the times, we're the best Sunday league team in the country. So if we want to be Tamworth, if we want to be, you know, the two London teams, what do we have to do to make ourselves that next step? You know what I mean? In terms of that, and that's about challenging everyone on the team though, not even just your best players. But I suppose, is it elite players' jobs, like you guys' jobs, to drive that more so or or not? Yeah, I think it's definitely the job of elite players to drive performance. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if that's... But it's like, is that the focus of the team? Like, is the focus of the team to be... Is, the senior team to do as well as possible. If it is, then mm. that should that should the elite players' focus should be to to drag the players within that team to make them better. But if your focus is is elsewhere, do you know what I mean? if it's whether it's to grow youth teams, do you know what I mean it's whether it's to expand kind of how many fans you're getting, increase market, and all these different things. Like people don't have like they only have limited resources when you got to work and when you have to do these other things. So how do you use those guys as best as you can? Mm. Then it's also someone having that plan, having that vision, and then actually mm. picking the right guys to to put it into place. Mate. Listen, it's it, take, it will literally take five <laughs> minutes for someone to type up an email that says, "Hi, I am such and such from this team. Mm. We have we have games here. I'd like to send all of your students a free ticket yeah. to bring their family down, and also yeah. we have a youth or a junior team that if they'd be interested in giving the sport a go, here's when we train." Thanks very yeah. much. Hope to speak to you soon and send it to schools. The exactly. question yeah. I've got then, though, is if it's that simple, why, don't why it? doesn't it get done? Yeah, Because people are lazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There, there's no... It's true. It's true. There's, no, there's nothing else to it because if you want to put in the time to grow your sport and grow your team and your programme, and I suppose this leads on to what does it make, like elite, you could say what is an elite programme. You know, you guys are all good players on good teams because of the things that they have around them. But one of the reasons we can get people that tight is, again, it's because we've got that good junior programme and we go over and above to make sure we've got the structure in place. And it's easy just to not do that and put all that money, time and effort into your senior team. Yeah. But it doesn't help your team grow and it doesn't protect the longevity of the sport, does it, without putting that work in? No, it's very short-sighted, also, isn't it? Yeah, I think there's also a bit of humility involved. I mean, there's, you know... Some people, if you don't have the greatest stadium, the greatest stands, you don't think you're the best at football. You know, you still, we're all still playing amateur football. It's it, at the end of it, sometimes you get that very British feeling of I don't want to tell people to come and watch me play sport amateur. You know what I mean? You know, what? How audacious is it for me to go and do that? You know, yeah. it's a very British worry to have, and I think that 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 plays a quite a big part in what we're in, in why we're not advertising it as much as we are. Yeah, but yeah. surely teams can advertise you guys. So as you as the elite player... I mean, I'm not saying be... it's not... <laughs> I'm not saying it's not yeah. a great idea. I think I, I, I definitely think we should be doing more. I mean, it's yeah. like... I mean, even if we got... was to... Even if okay. it was to do some more like North v South games, I think that, you know, those things should happen. It happened at the Uni Bowl level. Mm. Um, you know, there's, there's a group of guys here who all play in the North who I'm sure would happily play together against the South team or... You know, I'm not playing with like a, <laughs> <laughs> Could you do like a, a Midlands versus the Northwest team? Do you know? 
those kind of things. I think <laughs> there just needs to be some more some more of that in the sport because they're the games we could all have a mutual cause to drive people to. You know, if I bring three people, you do, you do, you do, you know, at a decent stadium. And it should all pay for itself in theory, you know, as long as you can drive it and get a... I'm sure people would sponsor yeah. it, etc. I'm telling you well, now... Have you seen the white-collar boxing that yeah. happens? Well, yeah, if, yeah. I'm sure you've all got a mate or your brother's mate who claims he's now a pro boxer because he's done this white-collar boxing once. But <laughs> the, the way that you do the white-collar boxing, um, please, someone, if, you know, even in the in the chat, correct me if i am wrong but i think the white collar boxing to take part in that you then have to sell up a certain amount of tables yeah so like to, let's say i want to fight will i, I don't <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think, yeah. john, you anyone don't. please like should say comment if you'd like to see that fight because johnny has got some absolute <laughs> pencil beef for will listen will, i'm just going to apologize on behalf of the show that you've had such this get, to this get this out being, twice next year just better just for this being get, better than Johnny's team. This will get sorted out twice next year. Maybe <laughs> three times <laughs> if Will's lucky. Um, no, I think um the way the white the way the white collar boxing works is you know, if if someone wants to fight someone, let's say, you would raise a certain amount of money via the tables. And um, essentially what you've just said is the exact same thing. And they <laughs> and uh <laughs> <laughs> that would be nine rounds of me just running away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and me definitely not chasing you at all. Um, yeah, I think if, if, I do know how to do tripping. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I definitely know how to trip. Um, I think if everyone definitely did um, did their part in terms of you know, let's just say get at least five people to one game, especially because ho- it's home games, isn't it? That's where your focus needs to be. And then your diehards will follow you to away games, as you know, with Tamworth. Um, so with it, I think no matter what, if one person gets three to five, <laughs> 60 players. <laughs> uh, <I> just <laughs> That's not even a new comment. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, <can't help> <laughs> <laughs> I thought we was asking for a fight there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, def- I definitely agree. I think people need to do more for their club in terms of uh, generating some more interest. Yeah, I mean, for me, we need we need to start building something now. Otherwise, kids are going to choose different sports. Yeah, one hundred percent needs to be a, needs to be a better product, doesn't it? Um, speaking of better products, watch this seamless transition. Better products tonight, Monday Night Football. Come on, is this not the greatest game of the season? Yes, 100%. I think this is the best game of the season. You know what, right? It, the only other game that I'm going to want to watch more than this is Raven Steelers. Yeah. That's like a Ravens fan. Boring. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> 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 no, this is the best game. This is the best game. It's just a shame it's so early and Chiefs aren't firing as they should be. This is the best game of the schedule this year. I'll tell you what right. we'll do. Let's take a prediction from everyone, see what the score is going to be. So we'll start off with Will. What what your predictions for the scores? Uh, Tough that Will. <laughs> straight in. Uh, I think I think uh, Kansas are going to. Edge it, but I think it's going to be um, pretty high power. So 35, 28, something like that. To Kansas, yeah? Kansas, yeah. Oh, that's a shout. Jonathan, what's your score prediction? Uh, massively high scoring teams. So I'm just going to go ballsy 45, 42. To any team just it, that's it, 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 yeah it, it literally could, it could just go anyway and they've right. both got amazing kickers as well so oh um, look at them they, they, are the the they, are, they, are, they are people they score a lot of points not um, recently I'll go Chiefs Chiefs no right, no okay. not recently Harry let me just buy uh, that one down I reckon you both went Chiefs, right? So if I go Ravens, then I think that's the best way. So, but I reckon maybe not as high scoring though. I feel plenty of field goals. Maybe twenty four, twenty one, Ravens. Good shows. 
Now, Michael, I'm letting you pick before me because you beat me on the prediction last week. So, so I did. That was we'll, on the... we'll just we'll 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 go back round to that of how much of a great shout that is. Uh, right. So I am going to go. Um, it will be the Ravens. <coughs> um, they, they've started better. They are better at the moment. Kansas offense is a bit stuck. The defense is terrible. Um, I would say it's going to be a fairly convincing win for the Baltimore Ravens of about. 28 plus a field goal. 31 13. That 31 30. Ravens, yeah. Oh, that's a. Wait till you heard last week's shout. I know. Last, I can't believe it. I'm really stuck on what to pick because I want to get a point against you. And you've gone Ravens, and that's who I wanted to go for. Can I just pick Ty? Would that count? <laughs> no, you can have two <laughs> points if it's a tie. <laughs> I can have two points of a tie, so I'll take the lead. No, nah, it's not. It's not going to be a tie. Can I predict like both kickers get injured? Is that a show? Jesus. That, I mean, <laughs> it would just be my luck, wouldn't it? Now nah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go a low-scoring game, and I'm going to say twenty-one-seven Ravens. I, I think the Ravens are going to try and run the ball too much, and. The defence of the Ravens is too good to stop the, the Chiefs, who just aren't firing at the minute. So, so that's a quick review of last week's picks. Um, I think our guest called New Orleans beating Ra- Raiders, which was obviously going to happen. Um, and then Adam also jumped on the back of the Saints beating the Raiders. However, I strategically thought Gruden home opener at Las Vegas and I went with the underdog and pretty much I think I called the score pretty much accurate as well yeah the Raiders did, won yeah. so it's one of those you take the punt you look like a genius However, that was next week when the Chiefs win by about 40 points I look like a big dickhead again <laughs> you know what it is right out of everything that happened on the podcast last week or the vodcast it was a podcast last week right so out of everything that happened I thought it went really well the views were great we were talking away to people, it was fantastic. The guest was spot on, but then I remembered your prediction, and I hate last week's podcast. <laughs> like, I, I couldn't believe it. I was sat in the house watching, I was like, I'll stay up, I'll watch this game. And the Raiders won. I was like, No, nah, no, nah, that didn't happen. And I knew I had to come on again this week and deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, not what I you got- know. I would, I'd obviously, after staying up late, I slept in, so I had a bit of a, an easy day on the whatever, the Monday or whatever it was, and I woke up to a text message from him. <laughs> and I'd seen it, and I was like, no, nah, not even answering. I was like, oh, I've had enough. Not even answering. <laughs> right, final but, prediction I want from you all. Who's going to win the Prem North? Oh, Will's just dipped out, so we'll take Prem him as Tamworth. Prem North, who's winning it? Don't be a win. Uh, Moose had Nighthawks, obviously. Have you confirmed you're playing for them next year yet? I've uh, un- unconfirmed everything right now. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, like, uh, I think we'll probably be in lockdown by still by the time next season rolls around. So, yeah, that's fair uh, the Nighthawks aren't even the best team in Merseyside. Wow. <laughs> we don't even play Merseyside. So that's one. That's playing, we play in Lancashire. You play Lancashire. Yeah, I yeah, you do like Holland. We play, we play in Skem. So, you do you know. play in Skem. You, Skem, Skem Nile, right? I get still. Nice yeah, place. Yeah, still. They, good. they put in um they put in a, a bit of a stand at the gym. Yeah, there's there's a bit of a, a bit of a stand now. So hopefully my mum yeah. my mum might want to come and watch a game now. Even. There's loads of stand. Lovely big stand at the Titans, Harry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no one can stand. go in. No one can sit in it though. No, they allowed. can now. We have sorted oh, it's fine. Just just for your mum. <laughs> just she came and had to stand on the side of the pitch and I couldn't see anything <laughs> behind all your players, so it's just like <laughs> stands guys. open now. You're more than welcome, so you might just see you now. Same oh, offers for you, Will. <laughs> oh, <thanks. laughs> so we're just going through who's going to win the Prem North this year just a fiery spice it up to end with who have you got oh. Will? Uh, Tamworth <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to yeah. pretty obvious call I thought <laughs> Jonathan well Harry said um, Merseyside Nighthawks Merseyside Nighthawks that's who he called it with yeah I'd say yeah. that they've, they've made up fair, to I think I think they're pretty slept on. I'll be there with you, Harry. That you're a you're a very very good team. Uh, I think Titans and Knicks take a lot of the glory, but I, I think if anyone's gonna 
if any other team from the Prem North other than those two could win the Prem North, it wouldn't shock me at all if the Night Hawks strung it together and won it. I, I think know. it, it we'll could be, be for me, it's, it's it's really hard to tell anything, I think, right now. Yeah. yeah, I think until everyone gets back to actually playing football and oh, stuff, yeah. it's, it's tough because there is going to be a lot of changes. I think like you see lots mm. of coaches stepping down, GM stepping down, all this stuff. So it's going to be, uh, it's definitely going to be interesting by the time March, April rolls around and we actually see <laughs> what we're left with, I guess, by the time we actually oh, get yeah. into football again. Agreed. Well, Adam, you've got a casting vote. <clears throat> Well, I've, I've not cast- even voted yet. Yeah, come on, John. Yeah. You can vote. Go on. You just jump straight you, in. Let well, I know who you're voting for. You're I was going to go Edinburgh, you. but now no, I've got to <laughs> uh, I, I will. Um, I will go with also Titans. Um, the only reason being is all I will say without giving too much away is it's not who you can retain, and it's not even who you can get back. It's about the players who might have previously retired who might come back out and play. So, just going off that, I'm going to go off Titans. Well, if if I've got to make a decision (laughs) now... I I wish I knew what he was talking about, lads, because I don't... (laughs) (laughs) Michael's like, who the hell's coming back? I'm I'm absolutely all over Johnny's DMs after this. Who do you know? (laughs) (laughs) That is wild, that, Craig. Sorry, mate. That's really wild. Yeah, you're not playing in the Prem for a while, is it? I'm, uh, I don't know what it is, but I kind of, I want to say Sheffield Giants. I really could, do. Okay. Yeah, you can want to say that. No, yeah. I just from. I'd like, I'd like my missus to bring my tea up, but that's not going to happen either. <laughs> <laughs> but from some of the people I've spoke to, I would say they're going to have a a very decent team this year. Oh. I know I know a few guys that are wanting to go and especially from up this area, I travel down to play for a Prem team as their last two raw sort of situation. And I think I think they're gonna have a pretty decent team. And I really their coach one. I really I oh, love, I love, Toby. Toby. I love oh, Toby. I think yeah. one of the yeah. one of the nicest guys in football. Yeah. So just just for that one, I've I've got I've got to go with them. Like um I'd love I think, to see it for him. Mate, so would I. Like, I really think they've got a good shot at us. Like, I've, I've, I've always said, like, outside of the London teams, I always think the Titans will be the next to win the full thing. And I've said that for years. Like, but I just think this year, I think Giants have got a, a good show. There's a lot and, of inside information here, isn't there? A I lot just, of inside information. Will's just sat there at Tamworth thinking, we've worked for the past three years, what are these in the who, idiots? Who can we sign from last time? <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to stir the pot. I just, I know there's a few guys from up this way that's not, that we don't have, obviously, a local mm. Prem team. So I, I know there's a few guys from up this way that's having a They're good hard thing. past. Other teams to go to Sheffield. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just look yeah. at the stuff so that's coming the out. Team that's not been mentioned is Sandwell. Will, you must know Sandwell. I know they've got Tristan Varney playing quarterback, haven't they? So they must be out. They must be out. Do you know much about them? Are they going to look going into the season? Got any film? Uh, I have just seen that um, their head coach and OC have just stepped down. So that's probably yeah. going to hinder them a little bit. So that's a yeah, cracking yeah. start, isn't it? Really? <laughs> <laughs> going to be like, struggle <laughs> with that one. Um, <laughs> So that could be, yeah. But as far as I know, that's that's kind of the main issue going on with them at the minute. But how close are they to Tamworth? Is there a big thing with players from the Birmingham area going one or the two? Or um, will that be an issue for you guys? I mean, there's, there's something. I'm, I'm going to botch it up now, but something Jason always says: don't confuse rivalry with geographical proximity. Yeah. Um, just because yeah. they're close doesn't necessarily mean they're a rival. You know what I mean? That's so. the most Jason Scott comment I've ever heard <laughs> in my entire life. But, uh, <laughs> Anything he says is usually right, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah unfortunately, so he's, he's always right with that, to be fair. Um, I think uh, we'll wrap it up there, lads. But I, honestly, I just want to say thank you for coming on. I think it's been a, a very insightful uh, podcast today. And uh, <laughs> I appreciate it, honestly. Thanks very much for coming on. and. Hope to get you back on in the future. Yeah, definitely. Thanks very much, lads. Thanks, it's, uh, much appreciated. Thanks, guys. Uh, Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>
See you later. So, <laughs> so for all you guys that have been tuned in from here on out, I would just like to say thank you very much. Um, we've actually got another show tomorrow. I've, I still need to try and persuade Michael if he's going to come on. But we've got another show tomorrow with uh, Gabby Knopp. She's going to be coming on the show, and we're going to be talking more about the elite system, what she's doing abroad. Um, we're going to go through pretty much everything. Uh, hope to have you all back in here tomorrow. Um, thanks for tuning in. Please like, please share. Thanks very much. Take care, guys. <laughs>